What are the top five food cities in the world ranked by world-renowned food critic and the guy who's eating everything under the sun, Andrew Zimmer? I'll tell you what. Opinions on food are like bungholes, okay? Everybody's got one, but some are crap yet and others. Let's run the clip. If you had to say your top five food cities in the world, Andrew, what would you consider yep. them starting with number five? Uh, number five is a tie. Paris and Madrid. I, I, I can't separate them. Let's go for number four. Uh, Mexico City. The variety, the, the the flavors, there is, I mean, Mexico City, number four in my book, one of the best cities in the world uh, for travel and food. Number three, Andrew. Uh, Tokyo, kind of obvious. My favorite. Uh, number two, Andrew. Uh, well, the other great cuisine in the world is Chinese cuisine. Um, and Chengdu uh, in China, in the Sichuan province, the, the food there is just absolutely mind boggling. Yes, they use a lot of chilies. Yes, they, they use a lot of heat. There are also dishes that don't have that. I'm obsessed with Chengdu. And the number one best food city in the world to eat in, according to Andrew Zimmern. Not even close, New York City. If you just took the borough of Queens and partitioned it and it was its own city, Queens would be the number one food city in the world. Andrew Zimmerman caused a stir on the internet with his top five food cities. And this is guy, this guy is Andrew Zimmer. He's literally eaten everything. Like I think even, I don't want to have to compare him to Anthony Bourdain, RIP, but I think he's eating even weirder food. He had his whole show based around eating well, bizarre Well, you foods. know, I don't really think his list was uh, legitimate because he didn't really have any Italian food on there. So I, I'm just going to go ahead and throw it all out. Hey, I'm just saying, Andrew Zimmern has been saying this for years. One episode took Zimmern to Ho Chi Minh City, where he spent the day eating around town, enjoying some of the best Vietnamese food he'd ever had. I love the cuisine of that country. Um, I had that same experience in Chengdu, China, and in Paris, France, These the other cities that are real temples of gastronomy. To be able to have food in those places at that level of execution, or Queens, New York, for that matter, um, is something that I will never, ever, ever uh, forget. I think I'm the luckiest guy in the whole world. I mean, David... Food lists always cause a stir because everybody feels, you know, their region might be superior. But this guy, I mean, we got to talk about it because everybody eats food, right? So that's why everybody's got opinions on it. Right, exactly. And everybody wants their food to be the best. So we're going to talk about it. We're going to break it down. And we, not quite on Andrew Zimmerman levels, but we have eaten a lot of food ourselves. So we're going to chime in there and talk about what the comment section thinks. Please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. But you know what goes on a lot of food well? Hey. Andrew Zimmern, you haven't had Smala sauce yet. Let me know if you want me to send you a bottle, but check it out. It's made in the USA. Real quick, I got to point out this uh, comment from Brady Buckner 6. He said, yeah, uh, I think all these Jewish people like different weird foods. <laughs> what? What is that supposed to mean? Well, I mean, this guy's name is Brady Buckner. I can only imagine what he eats uh, on a daily basis. You know. Let's go to number five, Andrew. He had Paris and Madrid holding down the number five spot, a split pick. Mm, I'm excited. You know, I'm about to go visit Paris, so I'm ready to see. But, but I will tell you this, David, a lot of people have criticized Paris over the years for not being that good. Although French techniques are always touted as the top techniques Andrew, in the world. Sometimes even the people in France say, no, 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 no. You have to go to Lyon. Lyon is the f home of right. French cuisine. Paris is just for a bunch of tourists. It's just making croque madames and you know. Uh, let, 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 hey, guys, as people who have traveled, you understand that in these very high touristy cities, sometimes that a lot of the food that's being sold is catered towards tourists so it's not necessarily the best food it's just the food that's going to sell to all the tourists like when i went to brussels belgium the food oh. was okay but it was just a bunch of waffles and a bunch of like mussels that were like decent but not great you know because that's just the food that sells mussels and frites yeah mussels and frites yeah i know i mean i guess it would be like comparing uh the food in new york city times square is not good andrew the food in hollywood la generally not good right so in these high traffic tourist areas generally the food is not considered the best it is always considered a carbon copy everyone's serving the same thing right 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 somebody said unfriend unfortunately french cuisine is outdated and very much past its time yes it was a beast in the 1970s impacted all other cuisines but it got super stagnant but guys listen if they carry over french techniques to any food that they're cooking out there then it, 
It has potential. Maybe uh, perhaps the new uh, elevated version of any cuisine is, uh, has some new Franco influences. They're part of the Franco sphere. David, I will say of all the picks, this seems to be a heavily debated one. So anybody in the comment section below who has spent significant time in Paris eating food, you guys let us know what you think in the comments down below. Does it deserve to be number five? Andrew. Also controversial was Madrid because some people don't like food from Spain, actually. Yo. Even though Spain also influenced a lot of Latin America. Yeah, so Spanish influence food is very popular around the world. Obviously, we understand Mexican food, very uh, also all, Spanish All the Latin influence. cuisines, right? All yeah. the Latin cuisines are Spanish influenced because that's who colonized them. But man, I will say this. I've been to some Spanish tapas restaurants multiple times and in a, in New York, which, which should have pretty good. It was good, but not like amazing. All right, let me let me just say this. I like this gambas al al ayo. That's really good. Okay, I think they have it in Portuguese as well. Uh, Argentinian, also yeah, Argentinian. Right. I don't like the croquettes. Mm. You know, to me, uh, uh, what what's the uh, paella? I don't know. Kind of overrated I from what I've had. Out of 10 paellas I had in my life, two of them were fire. Yeah. Maybe like, yeah. Uh, they, it smells good, though. Uh, this They got this calamari sandwich. They've got a lot of stuff. But, yeah, this one was uh, pretty controversial because some people in the comments were saying, Spain has the worst food of anywhere I've been in the world. <laughs> Probably doesn't have the worst food, but maybe has the worst food for a highly ranked country. Yes. Right, right, right. Yeah. You guys let us know what you think about tapas, man. I just think, I don't know. I don't know, man. They don't, you have it's good. It doesn't have enough spice for me. It's a lot of olive oil, but I like olive oil. Uh, number four, Mexico City. I don't think this one is debated. Mexican food is really good, and Mexican food is very vast and diverse. We understand this. They have coastal Mexican. They have different influences. They have inward, like, you know, inland Mexican Right, you could go to Puebla, which is more uh, Baja, like you said, different areas. Hey, you know, Beef man. from Sinaloa. You know, man, you want to go to Sinaloa or you go to Oaxaca. All the food is good, man. Yeah, it's different. Um, By the way, guys, uh, that we... I haven't been to Mexico City, but I've been to a lot of spots run by people who just came to New York from Mexico City on the low end, Andrew Taquiera Ramirez, and on the high end, Karima, which is more, I guess, representative of the Michelin star restaurants that most people, when they go to Mexico City, that's what they go because it's relatively cheaper in Mexico mm -hmm. to go than a uh, Western European country or like a North American Yeah, country. hey guys, even the world famous Caesar salad was invented in Mexico at a hotel in Mexico. But, but, but Andrew, it was actually invented by this guy from Italy who moved to Mexico to work at this hotel. So does it count as Mexican? No, no, no. so it does and it doesn't. So basically this goes to speak to Mexico City's hyper international history yeah I, 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 by the way I, earlier i know that it's in north america i know mexico's part of north america i just said it wrong um andrew here's some street foods that they have andrew tacos with fries in mexico city yeah. deep fried tamales yeah no they i mean dude mexican food is good it's good i and it, again it's more than tacos and it's more than a lot of stuff yes you can go to certain taco trucks and it seems like they're serving the same six ingredients over and over again in different forms between the tostadas and the and the everything and the burritos yeah. and the tacos but trust me you, mexican food is good i don't think that we we've only started in the past three years or five years in america started to get that ultra high-end elevated mexican food mm. that they've always had in mexico city all right david i think this next city is not as debated as a top five city. If not, it's usually top three for a lot of people. What is it? Tokyo. Tokyo, Japan. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to find... In fact, Andrew, the guy interviewing him said, just next one, next one. It's too good. It's too good. It's my favorite. Yeah. That guy, the interviewer said Tokyo is his number one. And I don't blame him. I think Tokyo is easily top five for almost anybody who's ever been. Dude. Anybody who's been, Tokyo should be top five. Now, I think the... It's not just that Japanese food is the greatest, and I'm not saying even Japanese food, Japanese food solely is the greatest, in my opinion, but I think how they execute everybody else's food and the cleanliness and the execution of it all, and sushi is top tier. Because you, you know, had some good Chinese food in Yokohama, yeah, right? Yeah, they have good Chinese, any Italian food, when Japanese do Italian or French food, when the Japanese chefs are doing it, they are doing it with quality and precision and that Japanese mindfulness. So I'm telling you, Japan is up there. Not to mention Japan, you know, but I think the only knock on Japan is like, maybe the food doesn't have a lot of spice, like hot spice is not very like 
It's almost yeah, it's impossible spicy. to find spicy food in Japan. It, it's hard. It's hard. I'm sure that there's Japanese chefs doing mala and like Sichuan cuisine yeah, now. Get one of those devil's ramens. <clears throat> I'll say this. I, I looked it up. Andrew, Tokyo has over 100,000 restaurants. It's the highest restaurant density of any city in the entire world. Whoa. Tokyo was number one. Whoa. And I think the key is... I think the thing that shines on Tokyo the brightest is the fact that Lawson's, you could have a good dinner at Lawson's. Yes, at, at Lawson's as, the, as in the convenience store. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And they have so many different types of cuisine, 14 million, dollar, uh, 14 million population. Moving on to number two, Andrew. Whoa, he whoa, dropped whoa. a bomb on this one. Okay. Zimmerman said Chandu. Chandu Channer, as in the Sichuan province. So I had to think about this one because at first mm. I was like, yo, is Andrew Zimmerman just trying to flex a pick that like 97% of other people wouldn't have on their list. But then I thought about it and I said, most people's favorite new style of Chinese food is Sichuan. And it's been so influential because it almost is like a new style to the world. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I feel like for the people that I've spoken to that have been to Chengdu or Sichuan in general, I think, you know, Chongqing, I know it's like kind of a separate place, but essentially... Chongqing and Sichuan, I don't want to say it's the same type of food, but they're closely related, let's be honest. So, essentially, the spicy region of China, a lot of people really love that. Because it's not just spice. For me, when we visited Chengdu, first of all, I don't think we really got to experience the totality of the food culture there. We went to a couple, of like one food street, and then we had Hot Pod and Skewers with the Higher Brothers, shout out to them. But... It was like, if you focus on just the hot chili Sichuan mala oil, it can get a little repetitive, but they really do have a crazy depth. They have non-spicy dishes. They have fragrant dishes. They have great desserts. The food culture is crazy out there. Yeah, actually, traditionally, Sichuan food is supposed to be 70% not spicy, 30% mala, but I just believe due to modern trends and just the way people have been consuming, it switched to 70-30 the other way. All right. Um, yeah, but yeah, Chongqing. Don't sleep on Chongqing, too. I thought this was a good deep cut pick, though. Shout out to Andrew Zimmerman. And number one, Andrew, he had New York City. New York, baby! And, uh, I mean, is there any real surprise here? Because this is sort of the world's capital. The United Nations is here. I believe the most cuisines in most countries are represented in New York out of the any city in the entire world. Guys, it's a hyper-competitive environment for restaurants, man. I mean, we, we have friends in the restaurant business, and... Uh, uh, many of them are successful and some of them, it was just too competitive. They couldn't make it with rent costs and just the food. Like the standard out here is so high. You can, you know, it. look at all the food Instagrammers and even including yeah. us and everybody who's, who's films out here constantly. We have friends who only film in like Queens and Brooklyn and they have whole careers just covering that food. And obviously what Andrew Zimmern said, where he's like, even if you just took Queens as a borough, and ranked it, it would still rank number one in his opinion because of the diversity it has. It has everything from Asian cuisine right. from to South Asian cuisine. It has European cuisine. It has Greek, you know, it has Indian. It probably has its fair share of obviously Latino cuisine. Um, just everything. Well, man. Queens is called the world's borough. I, I would say the Queens would have the most authentic ethnic cuisines, whereas Manhattan would have the most like elevated experiences, right. more catered to like a diplomat or a rich banker from yeah, those countries. And, and to be fair, when you go to certain parts of Queens, it is hyper diverse, hyper busy, kind of nut. It's nuts out there sometimes. There's, there's so many different types of people and there's so many of them. Okay, so this guy came in and said, you know, NYC isn't really that great, to be honest. Philly has better food than NYC. What? All right, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. On a blue-collar American side, I think I know what he means, though. Because as New York got so great at all the ethnic cuisines, I don't think the pizza here maybe quite is as good as it used to be. Or, like, you know what I'm talking about? Like, I could see Philly really putting their heart and soul into, like, Bar food. No, I think like, cheese I don't think steaks, the bar, Yeah, I don't think the bar food I think food Philly is beats and cheese steaks and chicken pho. Philly is better than New York as far as chicken, probably Vietnamese food overall better than New York. And and like, I don't think they win in pizza, man. Dude, the pizza spots out here, if, you, if you're willing to pay $5.50 right, for What about a real slice, cheesy lasagna, huh? Or a Sunday gravy? Yeah, maybe Italian-American food, but like not... Italiano. Right, right, right. Not Italia, Italia. Um, 
And what are some other spots that he's leaving out? So, all right. So, a lot of other spots people mentioned were Toronto and Vancouver. Mm. Shout out to Canada. Toronto, Vancouver have great food, but they might be more heavy on the Asian and French Europeanized levels. Yeah, right. But, Canada's but, kind of like a more French, yeah, less maybe diverse some, version of America. Uh, Toronto, South Asian, you know, uh, and some uh, Caribbean food, but maybe not the world's food. All right, some other American cities, Houston, New Orleans, and Chicago. Yes, good food in those cities. Good food in Philly, too. Um, but beating New York, I think it's hard to say. San Francisco and Seattle, uh, I would say the overall Bay Area. First of all, I think that's kind of cheating because that's encompassing so many different cities. But it's I like think, 25 cities, right? Yeah, and that's too many millions of people. But I will say the Bay Area has pretty good food. Seattle has good ingredients, great seafood in Seattle. Right. But expensive. I think the key about Houston, uh, New Orleans, and somewhat Chicago is that the the, the purveyors of the food, the restaurant tours don't need to crunch the customer. Got it, Because they got have it. a lower cost of doing business. Right, right, right. Okay, that's understandable. Hong Kong and Singapore got to be up there. Guys, Hong Kong, if you count Hong Kong as its own city, I mean, that's pretty damn good because they also, Hong Kong has a lot of everybody else's types of foods and they do them well. Maybe, maybe they don't do Latin American food that well right, right now. I haven't been in a while, but as far as doing Asian food, it's pretty good. Oh, Bangkok. Oh, Bangkok. David, or I should say David Chang, where are you? How come Vegas isn't on the list? Huh? That's funny. Um, somebody said uh, Jakarta is kind of good, Andrew. You went there. What would you say? Jakarta. Like somebody just said there's more stuff there than you'd think. Yes. I think I did go to some cool cafes in Jakarta that I didn't expect, but maybe I didn't get to spend my all my time in there. I mean, unfortunately, I don't think... Indonesian food as an entirety is ranked like top five, although it is really good. So I think that, I don't know about Jakarta, maybe. I All mean, right. yes, there's good food. Listen, anywhere where there is money and international tourists, the food should be good. Right, right. But the one, Andrew, major economic hub that got left off this list with a ton of billionaires was London. Mm. I think if you listen to uh, 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 Gordon Ramsay recently, he said London is really coming up the past 10 years. But... Maybe still not quite on the same level as some of these cities. You don't but like some bangers and mash and a yeah. meat pie. David, what is your what what's your pick for cities that he left off? I got for me, mine. for me, honestly, I'm gonna go with Toronto. I wow. think Toronto for at least for like Chinese food, I don't think they have as many different types of Asian food. Definitely not as much Southeast Asian food. But in terms of just Chinese food, Toronto is probably better than New York. Right. And better than even Man, it's tough to... I love San Gabriel, Alhambra area is like 626, which is like the east side of LA, 626. But like, man, Toronto might be it in terms yeah. of quality. I still like the setup of 626 because the proximity is so much closer though. Okay, I think so. I think that's fair. I mean, I think some of the 626 cities from the San Gabriel Valley, man, whether it's Arcadia, San Gabriel, Alhambra, I think those cities for the size of the cities are pushing their weight. I mean, there's real, and a, for particularly Asian food, let's be honest, and particularly the Chinese diasporic foods, um, but that includes, I think, like other Asian countries as well. The food in the 626 is, is fire, you know? I mean, I think it's uh, it's really good. But, and, and I think like people need to remember Andrew Zimmer, and he's coming from a place uh, where he, any city he goes to, he's exposed to some of the best food, right? right? Like, at least top tier food. Maybe, maybe you could argue the top, but he's gonna go to some of the top Andrew, places. Are you, what do you think? Some people said they left Melbourne off. You have been to Australia. Are you going? I think Australia has some good food. You know, again, I'm not gonna say I covered all the bases in Australia, but food there is great, mate. It's it's pretty nice. Yeah, it's you know, more, food, we've got a lot yeah. more than room meat and flat whites. Yeah, 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 we got a lot more than just the meat pies. You know, it's not. I think a lot of people get caught up in the room meat and the room burgers. But honestly, you know, due to the the uh, beef industry and all the closeness to Asia, we got a lot of great Asian food. Hey, for me, I'm gonna Central Asia. Just ending on that. Boom! Fire, I think you'll out. find it in Queens. All right, everybody. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments down below. What is the best food city? I think it can always be debated, but I do think some of these cities absolutely do belong in here. Tokyo, New York, got to be on your top five. Honestly, it was a, it was a pretty solid list. I don't know if it, it probably wouldn't align exactly with my list, but very solid list from Andrew Zimmerman himself. Let us know what are your top five food cities in the comment section below. Until next time, we're the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.